Hi there and welcome to the podcast. Today's guest I have on Tanner Chidester. He's a fitness entrepreneur coach. He's a multi seven figure fitness earner. He helps fit pros to six figure incomes. And he's a Comma Club award winner. And I had a very interesting conversation with him. So I hope you all enjoy. First of all, thanks for, for uh, coming on and yeah. Yeah, and your time there that's that's great yeah awesome awesome so uh so yeah so um i just my my the scope of this uh show is um and, and where my interest kind of um started this thing is uh is get is getting people um you know from from social media and uh and different uh, business owners entrepreneurs and and uh t- talking and speaking with them and, and and figuring out the different uh, f- um, successes and, and failures, yeah, um, and kind of um, kind of a, a story behind that because, uh, as you know, and um, you know, er- tons of people are uh, are making successes for themselves, right? With uh, w- with the help of, of social media, right? Getting their words out there, you know, anybody can can uh can put themselves out there and um uh, and get uh, get to great success yeah so, so so you're you're into fitness yeah man yeah full fledged bro <laughs> yeah so so you you coach you your personal trainer yeah so i do like online training and then basically when i crack got my two comic club award whatever i started showing other trainers the exact same things I did. And that's been even more successful uh, just because, you know, it's like you can charge even more and it's obviously anything financial ROI is going to be easier a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. So all fitness. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Um, helping people get fit and healthy is, um, is a great, uh, is obviously like a, it's a huge, huge help for, for people's lives, improving their lives. Yeah. So, so give me a give me a, a maybe a more detailed rundown of of a bit of how how your how your business works. You don't have to get uh, you know the secret juice or whatnot, but uh, <laughs> get... yeah, man. So so just kind of like how I uh, get client acquisition and stuff mm-hmm. like that, or uh, well, well, yeah, yeah so... just just the whole, give a, a general rundown. Okay. Yeah. So um, both sides of the business. The fitness side, um, it'll be a four month package anywhere between three six grand, and uh, you know I use heavy paid traffic. I love paid traffic because ultimately, you know, if you don't use paid traffic, it's very hard to scale. Mm-hmm. So um, what'll happen is they'll click the ad, they go through um, ManyChat. I use ManyChat to activate. So they'll land in Messenger, and then we'll push them to usually a webinar or a VSL, whatever the goal is. And then um, a lot of the magic kind of happens in many chat with uh, follow up sequences, stuff like that. And then uh, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, and then the webinar and the many chat, which was just huge for me. Um, and then we just push them to, you know, a call. We have a really stringent application, and uh, you know, we'll close sixty to seventy percent of the people we talk to, and. You know, we've just been hammering that method out, and this will be our biggest month. I mean, we're we're gonna clear, shoot, at least four, maybe five hundred this month. Wow. Um, so yeah, between the two businesses, and and it's the same process for both. You know, the only difference is that the fit the fit pros I call them or the online trainers, they're gonna do. You know, we'll sell that around ten to twelve, and it's a three month program, and then. Um, you know, obviously, if you get them results, right, they're going to keep paying, right? You, right, right, because it's it's easy to get paid by people you're making money. Mm-hmm. So, it's both been really great, man, and uh, I love it. And it's it's I think the best thing I did was I figured out B two C online, and uh, you know, as far as I know, I'm waiting for someone to correct me if I'm speaking out of line, but I think I'm the only guy who's gotten a two comic club award high ticket fitness. There's a lot of low ticket, but high ticket is, you know, it's easier per se, but it's actually, it's harder to scale, I think. Um, and that's actually, you know, now I'm actually getting ready to run low ticket stuff and all these kinds of things, but 
you know, I, I'm a big believer beginners should start with high ticket because the biggest issue they have is cash flow. And so that, that really propelled me and got me in a position financially where I can spend um, a lot of money to grow right? and stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. So can, can you give, can you explain a little more on what you mean by high ticket, low ticket? Yeah, so for anyone who's listening, like high ticket obviously would be anything. I usually would say three thousand plus. You know, some people would say a thousand, but high ticket just means you charge a lot more. You can give a higher service. It allows more margin for error, so you can mess your ads up more. Your copy doesn't have to be perfect. You can mess up more phone calls, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, low ticket obviously is going to be fully automated stuff, and typically like anything under two hundred bucks. Um, so low ticket's great. It's kind of the Holy grail, but the problem is, is I'm always preaching to people like low ticket doesn't really work, um, for beginners because there's too many things they don't know. Like they don't know how to run ads properly. They don't know how to write copy properly. They don't know how to make a sales page. They don't know how to do an upsell. They don't know how to create the product. They don't know how to do the emails. Like there's so many trap holes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, once you have cash, you can go out and learn or pay people to do that for you. But, you know, when you're just trying to sign someone up for a call, there's still a skill involved, no doubt about it, but it's a lot easier. And it's a lot easier to scale a lot faster because you're charging higher tickets. So hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, no. For, yeah. So, so, so do you spend, what do you, what do you, what would you say you spend the most of your time on it, it w- while you're working yeah I, I think now man it's managing the team um when you're when you're by yourself you're doing everything right you're doing mm-hmm. the ads you're doing the copy you're doing the funnels you're doing the sales calls now really as you grow and scale what i spent you know 90 percent of my time doing is uh checking in with my ads manager because obviously if he's spending three thousand dollars a day um, i need to make sure it's being spent wisely yeah. And uh, then the rest of it is like checking in with my sales reps, making sure they're handling the calls properly, checking in with my lead generation team, checking in with my coaches, like, you know, just leading the team in that aspect. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it just shifted from doing everything to where when you get to a certain level, you have to replace yourself. So you start spending your time delegating and making sure your team can do the processes for you efficiently. And that's really how you have to grow. You know, it gets to a point where if you do not do that, you're going to limit your growth. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I'd say you're just training the team at this point, but you know, that's, it wasn't always that way. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. used to spend, I mean, 12 hours a day, man. I mean, I was doing everything and mm-hmm. um, you know, most entrepreneurs, uh, I don't think they're willing to do that. You know, there's a lot of people who talk a big game, but when it comes down to doing the work, um, you know, waking up at 4 a.m. and working 12 hours a day doesn't really sound very sexy. Um, but, yeah. you know, to get the cars, to get the girls, to get the house or to have the impact. That's honestly what it takes. And um, so, yeah, man, I got a very interesting story and, and I'm very passionate about not only just fitness, but entrepreneurship in general, because um, I was the guy who like anything bad you can think of. It happened to me. And so I, uh, I love talking to people about it and I love doing podcasts like this cause it, it's, it's fun. So that, yeah, great. So, so, so let's say get someone, someone getting started and, um, say they really love, say they really just love working out and fitness. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, they throw up a fitness page, you know, they got some, some pictures of, you know, the, the progress, Um, they're trying to inspire, inspire people. And then they think, oh, Hey, I can, I can start to train, train people. Right. Right. What, uh, what advice would you give to someone that's just starting out? The number one thing I would say to people starting out is like that what I thought or what most people think is like they see Paige Hathaway or Bradley Martin or, you know, these bigger name people. Right. Mm -hmm. So they think that what they're doing is the key because they're the big names, right? They're the ones out there. But in reality, that's the, that's the top 1%. So it's actually the exact opposite of what you should do. So, you know, if I could go back in time and I could go and I could talk for hours about what happened to me and all the kind of tragedy I went through and all the coaches I went through and stuff like that. But I think 
sweating. I think ultimately, and like me and Color are both super hot. And I'm like, to do is they should, you know, get two to three high ticket clients, right? Mm-hmm. And the way you, the way the really to do that is, you know, you need to take the fight to other people. You know, a lot of people think that you know, posting a picture with a link is how you're going to make millions. And it's like, no, that's definitely not how it works at all. Mm-hmm. It's actually quite the opposite. And so um, what I say to most people is that, like, you got to – there's a way I teach my students, but ultimately the way I made my first, you know, 30, 50 grand months is I was messaging everyone and their mom. And, you know, anyone who engaged, anyone who, you know, commented on my post, anyone who – was interested in what I did, I messaged them and yeah, like it wasn't fun. It wasn't efficient, but when you're broke, what is your option? Yeah. You have zero, mm-hmm. you have nothing. So you can't do that. And then once I had money, I realized that to scale, to really make the kind of money I wanted a month, six figures, seven figures, whatever, that ultimately I needed to do pay traffic. And so I spent all my time, you know, paying coach after coach and funnel after funnel, trying to figure that out. And then once I, uh, then once I perfected it, um, I just started spending more and spending more and spending more. And that's how we're going to get to, you know, 500 a month. I mean, we might crack it this month and we're going to spend probably, we're not even touching the surface. I mean, we're going to spend 60 new business will probably be like three fifty or four. And then the payment plans kicking in. will take us over five. That's probably what it's going to look like. And um, my process is very dialed in. And once it's dialed in, you just spend as much as humanly possible. And that's all the big guys really do. And from what I've seen, um, the guys making crazy money, they spend a tremendous amount on ads. So once you have cash, so just I'll break it back down. I know I talk a lot. It's like step one, get two or three deals, right? Get a couple G's. And then, you know, in a perfect world, if you knew exactly what to do, you set your funnel up and then you start running pay traffic and you just reinvest and reinvest over and over and over and over. And that's really what I did. The hard part, right, is perfecting the funnel, perfecting your messaging process, perfecting your sales calls. And that's obviously what I try to teach my students who come to me so they don't have to go through two years of hell like I did, if that makes sense. Right. Well, what, what, some of, what was some of the – why do you call it two years of hell? Oh, dude, it was just – you know, I mean, I spent – um, for those who don't know my story, you know, long, long story short, I spent about, you know, the first two years um, trying to low ticket offer. And the biggest problem with that is the kind of like I said to you earlier, I'm selling a $47 fitness plan. But the problem was like, it just wouldn't work because I couldn't run enough traffic to it. I couldn't get enough people to get to my page. And then let's say I could have, I wouldn't have known what to fix. I wouldn't have known like, Hey, the copy's wrong or the ad's not converting or the landing page or whatever. So I spent about two years of that. And finally someone told me to go high ticket. And, you know, I didn't realize people would buy, you know, 15 hundred plus dollar packages. I mean, now I sell them for six up to six grand. And before I was like, no way. Right. And, uh, during those two years, I was a server. I did door to door sales and I was building my skills. I didn't really realize it, but I was building my skills. Like I was learning about funnels. I was learning about emails and, I wasn't making money, but I had learned skills. And then um, I remember to this day, I I spent my first week, I got three people on the phone. Uh, I switched to a high ticket model and I made like 10 grand in the first week. And I remember I was like, holy shit. And (laughs) my life changed forever, right? I quit all my jobs. I went in full time and I was actually upset because I was like, this was all I had to do the entire time. Right now I do tell people I have a lot of skills Mm -hmm. and and I realize that, especially when I get new students, like I'll be on the phone. I'm like, Hey, look, like you're new. You don't have as many skills as I do, but ultimately that got me out of the hole. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I started making 30, 40, 50 K months. And then I was able to hire coaches. And even though I wasted, I shouldn't say wasted, but I, I lost a lot of money and a lot of coaches didn't pan out. I started learning so fast what not to do. Don't do this. Don't hire coaches who do this stuff. Mm-hmm. Don't hire this guy. Don't do that. Yeah. And, and now like I know every facet of my business, there's a lot of business owners who don't understand how to run ads or how to make funnels and do that. And I know every part of it and it's allowed me now to not only run it efficiently, but to make sure I don't get screwed over. Mm-hmm. Um, Because, you know, last thing I'll say is just there's a lot of guys who outsource stuff that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is that they don't not only do they not get results, 
but now they've wasted that money and they're back in the hole even more. And that's the fear of business owners. Right. Right. And so, yeah, man, uh, hopefully that makes sense. But I mean, during those two years, I was making $2,000 a month. I had, you know, a 16 year old car. My parents thought I was crazy. I left petroleum engineering. Um, girls laughed at me. My family thought I was an idiot. My ex-girlfriend th- told me I was a total retard. Like it was just crazy. And, um, you know, the fact I almost quit about five times. I mean, it was just so bad in my mind. I was just like, why am I putting myself through this? Why am I working 12 hours a day, getting no progress? Yeah. But um, I had a mentor and he just was like, hey, man, just don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. And he's the only guy who kind of kept me going. And when I finally figured it out, it was literally just like the biggest relief you ever heard. Because when you go from making 2000 a month to 10000 in a week, you feel like you're a king, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man. So that's kind of my story a little bit. That's a little bit of it. Well, yeah. that's awesome. <clears throat> Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, that's like the, the kind of the typical thing is like bootstrapping yourself and, uh, and using, using your, the only thing that you really have when you have no money is, is time, right. And your own resourcefulness. Yeah. Well, and, and and the other thing I think that's interesting, right. Is a lot of guys will come to you or they'll come to me or whoever, and they'll just say, Hey man, I don't really want a business. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, hire a coach or, Hey, do this. And like, Oh, I can't. You're like, why? Like, Oh, I have a new car in the house. And I'm like, dude, you realize I moved home with my parents at 25. Right. Like, <laughs> like it's just, it's part of it too. Is I just, I, it genuinely comes down to people putting their pride aside and their ego. Mm-hmm. And literally when you say, I'll do whatever it takes, literally being willing to do that. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. um, it was super embarrassing. It was hard. It was like, people are like, Oh my gosh, you're living at your, but I just didn't care. It got to the point where I realized I was like, you know what? It's my life and I don't care what anyone else thinks. And I need to figure this out. So when you don't have money, you either have to lower your expenses so you can use that money on your business or you have to make more. And so it was logical for me to go home, not have to pay rent pocket two to three grand a month. And that's how I got out of the hole because it allowed me to spend that money on my business. For sure. Yeah. And putting the money, yeah. Putting that money back into your business instead of, exactly. instead of a, a lifestyle that you you know, you try to keep up with, with, uh, you know, the others exactly. around you. Exactly. And it, and it's just, you know, ultimately people don't care as much as you think they do. They just don't. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Great. Okay. Well, um, I know that we had some, some technical difficulties there at the start, um, but that's no, no big deal. Um, I can just edit all that, edit anything out. Um, so another, okay, so I have a few questions here. Yeah. Um, so let's see, how long have we been on the call for? Okay, so only 17 minutes. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll start it with, is there anything... I should have asked, but I didn't. Dude, not, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll answer anything. So it just depends on, <laughs> it just depends on what you want to share on your show. I'm happy to talk about whatever I I'm a talker if you can't tell. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't think there's anything in particular. I mean, I just want to kind of share whatever you'd like to share and talk about. And I'm happy to talk about anything. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, so, okay. So social media is hugely important. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's lead generation, it's communication. Um, so how has say, um, like what's your biggest, um, social media? Like, um, where do you get the most traffic from? Yeah. So again, I would say, you know, 95% of my traffic comes from paid ads. Mm -hmm. Um, and now it's going to shift here soon. So if someone's listening to this and they look at my Instagram in about three months, they're probably going to think I'm a liar, but as of now, you know, I haven't posted on Instagram in about 10 months. And the reason for that is not because it's not important, but ultimately, you know, if you can get paid traffic to work, whether it's YouTube, Google, Instagram, Facebook, and your, your funnel works, you, you don't necessarily need to do so much organic. What I tell guys is like, you know, organic is all hustle. It, it's, it can work, but a lot of times for you to really grow your reach, right, with the algorithm now and just all that kind of stuff, again, you have to what? Pay for it. Um, and so when you don't have money, it's very hard, right? So if you're a guy who's starting Instagram today, it's a lot harder now than it was back in 2012 or whenever the hell it started, right? right. I, don't, I don't even remember. Same thing with YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. Like Christian Guzman, all these guys hit YouTube right when it started. 
And now if you try to build a channel, it's a lot more strategic. It's going to take more money probably. It's a lot harder to do stuff organically. So I don't know if I have a huge takeaway other than don't worry about building a following and all these other things that you see these big guys doing Mm -hmm. until you have cash. Because what they don't see behind the scenes is now that I've kind of upped my level in my game is I know a lot of the guys working on their Instagrams. I know a lot of the guys to like – I know a lot of the guys to like – what they're doing with their social media and and like, you know, just to grow it and stuff like that. So I don't know if this is good advice or if it's what you're looking for, but I, I just, I just, I just tell guys like in the beginning, all your focus and honestly for the rest of your career is to focus on. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, like I realized after a while, I was like, I was posting content, but it wasn't making me money. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know what? Not enough people are seeing this. I don't freaking care anymore. I want to spend all my time on sales. I want to spend all my time on marketing. And so um, obviously your paid traffic has to work Mm -hmm. or you're going to go broke. But once I got it down and figured it out, I just spent all my time like systemizing my team, scaling the ads, scaling the sales. And then it would allow me now where I'm about to start going back on social media really heavy. And I've got a couple videographers and I've got a guy who's going to help push my content. And uh, so I just would say don't get caught up in the numbers. You know, a lot of people get caught up in like how many people follow them, but there's a lot of guys who have a lot more followers than me, but they don't make as much money as me. And like, yeah, money's not everything. I get that. People say that. But ultimately, money allows you to have more impact. The more money you make, the more people you can help, the more you can push your message, the more you can give to charities, the more you can help your family. Like, that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. And so I focus all my efforts on what generates income. And then everything else that I want to happen will happen by a byproduct of that, you mm-hmm. know? And um, as long as you're ethical and you're actually helping people, there's nothing wrong with making a lot of money. And I think that's something that people need to understand. For sure. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, that's a good message right there. Don't be, don't be, uh, don't think that it's, that it's evil because it's not. Yeah. 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 So, so um, okay. So, so you said you're going to go heavy on, on social media um, yeah. and the algorithms are making it harder for organic reach, right? Yeah. hundred percent. Right. So, so, um, so, that, so that's good. Um, okay. So you already told me some things that you, that you failed at, that, that took you a while to learn, you know, through trial and error, hiring, coaches hiring the wrong coaches figuring out things that you know they did did or didn't do that that worked or or didn't like so the things that i was taught like that worked and didn't work Mm -hmm. well yeah man i mean the biggest thing that's disappointing to me that i see a lot of business coaches teaching is they just only teach organic Mm -hmm. and organic's a great base right like Learning how to properly message people, go in Facebook groups, post on your platforms, like that is the base to success. That's true. And, you know, I have clients who they want to come in and immediately start running paid traffic, but I'm like, but you can't even have a normal conversation. You sound weird, right? Like you don't sound like you can talk to a girl. Like it's just, just like I'm kind of joking, but you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like yeah. if you're, if you're weird or awkward, or you don't know how to do the basics. You obviously are not ready for ads, but a big kind of lie or thing that I think a lot of coaches don't tell people is organic is limited. No matter how hard you try or how big your following is with rare exception, organic is limited that for the majority, you might find a rare person who's like, Oh, I make a million dollars a year doing organic or, you know, Bradley Martin or whoever, but it's like, those are the top 1%. Mm -hmm. That is not the 99%. And so I just tell people with clients like, look, do organic to learn the skills. If you can get, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people to buy your product, then ultimately, you know, you can, you're validating your offer, right? You're showing people that they want it and that you can take them from someone who doesn't know you to a paying customer, but then you need to use paid ads. And if I had known that sooner, I would have spent more time trying to figure it out faster, right? I just, I just knew that for me to make millions a year, there was no way in hell that was going to happen without paid ads. And um, now that I know that, and now that I'm spending a lot of money, like I make more money, right? And right, it's, right. You know, so I just think the biggest thing is that a lot of coaches only teach organic. 
And I think the biggest reason is they don't know how to do paid traffic. And, you know, that's okay. But it's just like if you bring on a student, don't, you know, build them this pipe dream of, oh, you can do seven figures organically. Even six figures organically takes a lot of work. You know, it's a one-man team mostly. You're going to have to do a lot of hustling. And um, at the end of the day, we want to make a lot of money without hustling so hard, right? Like if you're hustling 24-7, who cares how much you make? Right, right. So that was kind of the biggest thing that just disappointed me is like um, there's a lot of coaches doing that. And then also like B2B is very different than B2C. So a lot of fitness guys go and hire a coach who's business coach, but he sells B2B. And like I said earlier, I'm doing both now. Anything financial ROI is easier to sell. I don't care what anyone says. Like when you have a kid who's willing to go get a credit card, put $10,000 on it to, you know, make a better future for himself versus a 300 pound male who makes $40,000 a year and wants to lose weight. Like who do you think is easier to sell? And it's just, it just doesn't compare. So just a few things like that. I don't know if that was helpful, but it was just understanding that there there's a huge difference between a B2C product and B2B. And then just a lot of coaches selling a pipe dream that organic is the holy grail. And it's like organic is the base of the pyramid, but to get to the top, you need other layers. And that honestly comes from profitable paid traffic. Right. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So I have another couple questions here for you. Um, so what made you want to get into fitness in the first place? Like what, what is, what drove you to like have the passion yeah. that you have about fitness? Yeah, man. Um, so I come from a family of seven uh, kids. I was born or I should say born, but I grew up LDS um, and it's just very conservative, right? Very conservative. I had two older sisters. So I was kind of like, I grew up kind of soft, if you want to say that. Where, <laughs> with you know, with I just, sisters? I was really, yeah, two sisters. I was really sheltered. Like they would get me in dresses. Oh, no. You know, keep, you know no just way. the pictures, the pictures you don't want anyone to see, right? And, um, I just remember, man, I got made fun of a lot. I was really socially awkward. I was, I was kind of a weird kid, you know, quite honestly. And I remember one day, like, I was sitting in class. I think it was fourth grade. And uh, maybe even sooner. I think, no, it was fourth grade. And um, I just remember kind of finally figuring out I was the kid everyone laughed at, right? And, and it just, I just remember going home crying. Like, you know, I got made fun of in football. I started trying to play sports. I was kind of soft. And um, long story short, um, I just remember, like, I told my mom, I was like, I'm going to start working out so I can beat these kids up. Like, I didn't tell her I was going to beat these kids up, but that's what I thought to myself. Right. And um, so literally, before school, every day, I start going to the gym. Uh, you know, I'm like 10, 11, 12 years old going to the gym. And at the time, like, that's crazy, right? P- kids don't do that. And um, I started going every day for like two hours, like religiously. And I remember in about three months, I put on some pretty good size, right? Because my body was responding uh, very quickly because you knew and I was a little kid going mm-hmm. through puberty and so people started noticing and I remember they started giving me compliments they're like man like you look you're big now bro like blah 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 and like people started to respect me and um I mean it was the first time in my whole life where someone treated me nicely and so from there it just gave me so much confidence and I just remember my grades improved and like I started talking to girls and then I started playing sports and I was like man I'm gonna kill everyone in sports because I'm the only kid who lifts so I excelled in sports and you know, it kind of led me to becoming captain of my football team. And, you know, in Texas, that's like a big deal. It's probably not as big a deal everywhere else, but it's a big deal down there. And, um, you know, just doing better with girls. And I said petroleum engineering and I played division one football. And so ju- just a lot of things stemmed from that. And so I don't give a crap about fitness because people get in shape. I care about it because I feel like it changed my life. Like I feel if I hadn't started working out and built confidence – that I would never, I wouldn't be the guy I am today um, where I just am very confident, probably too confident. Some people will say, but just <laughs> I'm very confident in my abilities. I'm very confident what, who I am or like what I want to do with my life. And, you know, so that's why I love fitness because I feel like the people I get, if I can take a guy and help him lose a hundred pounds, there's no way that he does not mentally change. For like sure. He will feel so much better. I actually have a client who lost a hundred pounds and I went to his wedding and the guys night and day, like, most confident guy you've ever seen he feels great about himself and it changed his life and like that's the kind of stuff i do it for it's that's amazing. amazing yeah that's amazing yeah that's that's huge huge life changes yeah yeah so that's that was uh that was really good there's more questions i i have and um 
it's been really interesting talking to you and uh yeah i feel like i haven't even scratched the surface i want to i want to get into cool. a little bit more details um, yeah because i think what you're doing is really cool thanks uh, so, um, but, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to sign off now. Um, okay. and I want to say that I really appreciate your time and, yeah, man. um, I'm, I am going to look forward to, to getting you, getting you on again. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. Like let's, let's definitely do it. I'm down. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Tanner. And again, yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. I appreciate you. Just let me know and we'll, we'll pick it up from there. Thank you all for listening and watching, and if you found this podcast useful, then you can support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing, and sharing with at least one of your friends. So again, thank you all for listening, and I'll see you next time.